Hi, I'm Paul Blatt's Private Wealth Advisor for Findmark National Bank and Trust here in Jupiter, Florida. I'm continuing our series today on behavioral finance and investor psychology. I want to cover two concepts today uh, as opposed to having broken them down mostly in singles uh, previously, uh, mainly because the two are very interrelated. Uh, we have overconfidence or you know, control illusion and hindsight bias, and they're interrelated on really kind of the ego getting involved and, and mixing that with luck and believing that that's a repeatable process. Uh, so overconfidence uh, tends to come, uh, you know, kind of as you ex could expect it. Uh, you get a little bit uh, more sure of yourself as uh, you've had a few, you know, a series of, of successes. Um, it's kind of easier to explain this from a, a, you know, a gambler mentality. Think about, you know, blackjack or something like that, where, uh, you know, you, you win several hands in a row, uh, and you know, the, you know the, the the player thinks that they're they have this you know touch and they're you know everything's working in their favor and they they start to make bigger and bigger bets and start to ignore the risks that are involved and wham eventually the house starts to win again uh, so that's a kind of that end of the spectrum and the other is the the hindsight bias uh, that tends to creep in when you know somebody usually on a hunch uh, you know makes a makes a call. Uh, yeah, maybe a couple of factors in play, but uh, they make that call and it turns out to be right. And then because of that, uh, again, you know, people tend to think that uh, either whether it was them themselves or a manager, but they think that, okay, well, they, they have some kind of clairvoyant, uh, you know, aspect to them and that they can continue to do that in the future. You know, I'm often reminded of like John Paulson who made the call uh, on subprime uh, lending and, you know, started making that, that big short, uh, which of course made his investors, you know, billions of dollars um, and, you know, extrapolate that into the future. Then people thought that again, he had that, that magic touch and that ability to make these uh, calls on a repeatable and consistent basis. And unfortunately he wasn't, uh, made some wrong calls uh, in the uh, mid 2010s. And I, I believe, I could be wrong on this, but I believe he actually wound up you know, even losing more money than he had made uh, on that subprime call. Uh, it's not really a denigration on his investment process or anything like that, but it's more an example of that hindsight bias. And again, with both of these, it's, uh, you know, trying to temper and keep that ego at bay uh, and, and really let the investment, you know, research and uh, process and allocation and, you know, portfolio construction, all of those aspects uh, you know, take the driver's seat uh, when we're making investment decisions. And that is really the way that we're going to have a, a more sound, repeatable and consistent, you know, investment, you know, journey uh, as we go forward. A uh, few more topics to cover, and I appreciate you listening so far. Hope you'll listen to the next few. Thank you.